welcome, good afternoon. Um, my name is Cheryl Tipton, I'm here from Freedom Works, and welcome to Series 3, Systems and Productivity of our Recover and Rise series. Now, for those of you who've been here all through the series, you'll know that obviously the Series 4 has jumped on, um, but we're just going to re revisit this particular um, webinar from Series 3, and Hayden Winters has kindly joined us today to talk about stock and inventory and what to do to get that online and how to make your business more productive. So before I introduce Hayden, here we are, online stock and inventory optimization, which is where we are today. And um, as I say, Hayden's going to be talking to us about exploring the benefits of an online system to help you manage your stock. Um, before Hayden starts, however, as always, it's just important to say that the Recover and Rise um, webinars are all brought to you by West Sussex Local Authority with Coastal Capital LEP. And um, part of the project really is also to support businesses in the area and to make sure that you have access to funding and to funding support. So on the screen at the moment, you've got three resources that are offering um, funding, grant funding, Business Hothouse in Chichester is an absolute wealth of um, funding, workshops, business guidance, and um, you know, get in touch with them and have a look. There's the website address there. Low Case, the low carbon across the southeast, is an EU funded project helping businesses adapt to climate change and promoting opportunities. So again, if that's something that is relevant for your company, have a look at Low Case. And Rise is a knowledge exchange with the universities. Again, very important if you're if you're bringing out a new product to market or making, um, you know, to make connections and solve some challenges. So three support um, offerings there. We've also got our, um, bear with me, my slides have actually jammed. There we go. That doesn't happen very often. We've also got our digital champions, which as, um, you know, because you're taking part in this webinar, you are entitled to eight hours of free, fully funded support with our digital business consultants. Um, that is fully funded by the Coastal Capital Growth Hub. And we've got a team of actually seven strong digital experts. So regardless of what your issue is, or I, I don't want to call it a problem, challenge, let's call it a challenge. Um, we've got seven digital champions that could help you and you can apply for a full day. Now that day can be taken over a month. It doesn't have to be one day, you know, a whole day, because I think that would make any business owner fairly scared, giving up a whole day. You can split it out. Um, but if you would like to take that up, all you need to do again is get in touch with Coaster Capital and there's a contact form. It's a very, very simple application. It's a quick follow up to understand what your needs are and then they will signpost you to a relevant digital champion. Now, all of our slides, um, this is session's been recorded and all of our slides are going to be obviously part of that recording. So you can access that email to get in touch with Coaster Capital for the digital champions. So that, that is there for you. So please do have a think about whether that would be relevant for your business and any grant funding that would also be relevant for your business. So without further ado, I will stop my screens and introduce Hayden Winters from Carpenter Box, who, as I say, is going to talk to us today about online stock and inventory. If you have any questions during the webinar, please pop them in the chat and we will have 10 minutes at the end just to go through questions. So over to you, Hayden. Perfect. Thanks, Cheryl, for that introduction. And uh, thanks, everyone, for coming along today. Um, so as Cheryl mentioned, as you're probably very well aware at this point, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, stock and inventory and how to get the best out of software um, to manage this process as efficiently as possible. So, OK, what I'm going to talk about first is what do we mean by inventory management? I find it's very important to define exactly what we're looking at, automating and streamlining first. So if you think about inventory management, uh, we might just be talking about uh, where you store the inventory, how you send out your inventory maybe, but most people tend to just think about where they're storing it and how they're holding it and keeping track of it. But the inventory management process actually is so much broader than that and includes not only um, the, the manufacturing or the purchasing, uh, the logistics, so how you're getting that stock and transporting it across the globe or how you're transporting it across from your, your local supplier and manufacturer through the, the storage process, the warehousing side, um, the sales and fulfillment, 
and then the customer service side. So all of these individual components make up the entire inventory management process. Um, and it's really important to look at how we can connect these up as efficiently as possible, um, utilizing either software or processes. And now that's probably the key takeaway is looking at all of these in conjunction with each other. So when we talk about inventory management, the type of ways that we can hold inventory, um, I've broken down sort of three key areas, uh, three key areas that a lot of businesses tend to work with. So I'd like to sort of highlight initially that um, you don't have to use one or these, you can use them in, in conjunction with each other. So we've got manufacturing and warehousing, uh, we have consignment and we have drop shipping. So manufacturing and warehousing, when I categorize inventory management using that method, what we're talking about is you are able to either manufacture the inventory yourself, uh, you outsource the manufacturing of the, the products to somewhere else and you bring that in-house um, and you're storing it in a facility. So either you've manufactured it yourself or you've purchased the stock in and you're holding it and are in control of that. You own the stock and you're responsible for storing it and fulfilling it. We then have consignment and consignment is, if you're not familiar, but hopefully you are, uh, consignment is where you're holding the stock. Um, you don't legally own it until you've sold it and then you pay the supplier for that stock. You may store it um, and quite often you, you might hold, if you've got a retail environment or a brick and mortar sort of store, um, you'll hold that. Um, but it's not necessarily always the case where you're physically in control of the stock, but more often than not, you tend to be. Um, and then we have drop shipping. So drop shipping is a, a more, I say it's the newer version of this. Uh, and this is where you store your, your supplier or at an external third party warehousing uh, environment and you use um, their fulfillment services and they send it directly from their fulfillment service to your customer. So I've got some benefits and drawbacks of each, and I'm just gonna go through those um, each individually now, and then talk about sort of why you would choose one or the other, what sort of environments work. So where you've got manufacturing and warehousing, what you're talking about here is you have complete control uh, over the quality and the cost. And when I say that, what I mean is you're able to physically hold the stock, you've purchased the stock at a price, you've agreed or you've manufactured the cost, and you're able to really be in charge of that that quality. So you own the stock, you're responsible for purchasing it. And that is a really, really important trait. I'll explain why relative to the others soon. Uh, you have self-directed fulfillment. So you are completely in uh, charge or responsible of the actual fulfillment and storage options available. So how you pack the warehouse, how you pack your storage environment, whether or not that is a warehouse or a garage or the living room, uh, you're completely responsible for that. That obviously comes with things like uh, insurance, uh, making sure that that is uh, secured safely um, from, from potential theft or, or weather damage. Um, these sorts of environments, as we start to scale up, tend to require heavy investment. Um, so, you know, maybe your living room or a garage is, is not much of a big deal, except for a little bit of taken uh, a space that's taken away from you. But often actually, you know, if we're talking about a warehouse or a storage facility, uh, to hold large quantities of stock actually is quite an expensive exercise to do. Um, so it depends on kind of what you're selling, how big the, the space is, what space it requires, where you're shipping it to. But more than not, it's actually quite an expensive, uh, expensive process to hold on stock. Uh, you've got inefficient storage uh, optimization there. So when I say that, um, there are some really, really fancy um, and very expensive uh, inventory storage tools and systems available. Um, and they're great because you can really optimize the, the space you have in a warehouse or the space you have in an environment, but they are incredibly expensive um, for these really high tech, high, uh, these very complicated uh, mechanisms. And more often than not, a lot of businesses, and I would say the majority of businesses do struggle with, with making the best space, use of the space. So I've been into a few warehouses where things are stacked up to the ceiling, but they need to get something out from the ceiling. It becomes a whole effort and it's big, big uh, exercise. 
so holding stock yourself can actually become quite a, an expensive and, and difficult thing to do. And you've got natural limitations. So if you've got a, a shed or, or somewhere you're storing the stock, um, you've got a natural capacity that you have to reach or, or you should be reaching. Um, so, you know, trying to make the best of that space and what stock you're storing where and those sorts of things, it, it can become a quite a, a difficult process to manage. When we look at consignment stock, it's very useful. Um, this is often done where we've got uh, stock perhaps that is more expensive. Uh, so this is quite often done with pieces of art or antiques. Um, so more sort of complicated, I'd say, more sort of expensive items. And the reason why that's so beneficial and consignment is so beneficial is you're not actually uh, paying for the stock you're selling until you've already sold it. And that's really helpful for a smaller business who um, maybe doesn't necessarily have the, the cash and the investment in uh, to, to buy stock, to buy large quantities. So holding stock on consignment is a really, really great idea to do that, um, to sort of save on, on uh, outlaying a large chunk of, of cash. So we're not paying for slow moving stock items. And this is a real key feature of, of consignment that I really like. Um, more often than not, if you think of a large retail store, they'll hold hundreds and thousands of items across multiple different retail shops. And if one item doesn't sell in one, it's likely it's not going to sell in others. And you end up holding loads of or spending a lot of time and space, uh, spending a lot of money in, and taking up a lot of space um, of these stock items that aren't really doing anything, aren't selling. So if, for example, you've got a few pieces on consignment or some more expensive items, and they're really not they're really not selling people aren't buying them um depending on the sort of contract you have with that supplier you don't have to pay for it and just have it sitting there so you don't have any cash tied up in it um which means you can go actually this isn't selling let me go and then go back to my supplier and and uh and take that away i guess or, or not sell that anymore so it's really a sort of a less risky side of, of, of stock management and ownership uh, because of the consignment nature, you can work with a large number of, of uh, suppliers. You don't have to worry about sourcing, manufacturing, um, developing anything. It's very easy because uh, often if you've worked with those different suppliers and they're on consignment, you don't have to set up payment terms with them. You don't have to set up you know, particular uh, uh, arrangements or credit limits. So it's a very easy way to diversify your product range. Some limitations on this. Uh, if you're not owning the stock, you don't have control of the cost. So whatever the cost is that you've been given, um, you ultimately have to pay that. So if, for example, you have a piece of stock that works and turns around very, very quickly, um, and you're selling that item at a really, really high rate, but the consignment supplier or the supplier increases that cost, um, you're going to be faced with a bit of a struggle and a bit of a challenge here in trying to, to, um, to sell that and to make an enough profit out of it. And naturally, you know, you're, you're paying for elements of storage and paying for elements of design and, and risk associated with consignment. So the stock tends to be a little bit more expensive to, um, to uh, pay for. And then lastly, we've got supply issues listed there. So uh, someone who sells stock in consignment may change that model. Uh, they may decide they're not supplying or manufacturing that component anymore or that, that item anymore. So you could potentially run into some issues. Um, where this differs, for example, from manufacturing warehousing, you're able to buy stock in large quantities if you know it sells and you know you're going to sell it and you're able to keep it there and, and store it on hand. So if there is a chance that does become obsolete or stops being sold, you're able to buy it in large quantities and, and sort of manage that process a little bit more effectively. And lastly, drop shipping. So drop shipping is, as I mentioned, relatively new. So uh, one of the big benefits of it is there's no warehousing and storage costs so this is a really really common um inventory control method held by people who use and sell strictly online or e-commerce at uh, sales channels so where you've got your um, brick and mortar store retail stores as we all know you like to go in and see something and touch something whereas if you're drop shipping and you're just selling on an e-commerce platform you don't, no one's going to see a brick and mortar store no one's going to see a shop so you don't need to hold that you don't need to show that so you're able to pay a um, supplier or drop shipping um, facility to hold inventory for you. Um, and then they deal with all the fulfillment, the sales. So this has quite a few benefits. And I'll talk about that in a second because I get quite excited about drop shipping. 
um, but potentially uh, you have more market opportunities. So if, for example, you're wanting to sell in the United States or you want to sell across Europe, um, taking all the tax compliance issues out of it, actually what you end up uh, being able to do is really diversify your, your uh, market. So you're able to sell in the US by storing stock in the US and having it drop ship from a US supplier without necessarily having to go and find a storage facility, get that insured, get a team out there to complete the fulfillment. So you're able to leverage off a much bigger platform and much bigger um, uh, third sort of third party. You do have a uh, potential capacity restriction. So a dropshipping provider will have a storage area available. Um, and as it's sort of part of their business, you'd expect them to have ample space available. Um, but depending on sort of how you move the stock between your different locations, where you're storing the, the stock, um, how quickly it turns around, what the costs are, it can actually become quite a, a, a costly and um, I suppose a capacity inducing thing. So, you know, if you store all of your stock somewhere, you're contingent on, um, on that being fulfilled and sold in those markets. So there's always just sort of risks as with all of these methods. And you have loss of control over fulfillment and quality. So, um, you know, the customer experience is really, really important. Um, and if the dropshipping company is not fulfilling the orders correctly, they use maybe a, a poor um, delivery uh, method. Uh, you know, the, the customer service isn't great. They can't find your stock. They're not turning around quickly enough. Um, those, those can cause issues. Um, so that's out of your control. So the reason why a lot of smaller businesses are using drop shipping as opposed to the other methods um, is because it's much easier to, uh, your fulfillment is being leveraged off an existing platform. So an existing, existing platform, an existing business where they've got the warehousing facilities, they've got the processes, they've got the inventory control methods. Um, and what you're actually doing is going, well, you're doing that better than I am. So I'm going to pay you for doing this. Now you can use or manufacture your own stock, send that to a third party logistics company or a drop shipping uh, fulfillment company and undertake that. But actually this method is really, really um, it is quite prevalent, especially in the last couple of years have really, really increased. And we're seeing more of our clients for sure um, utilizing drop shipping as opposed to utilizing warehousing um, and then storing stock in their own uh, in their own backyards, so to speak. So why is inventory management and why do those three different types of inventory management and what sort of problems do we tend to find when it comes to actually looking after and controlling and managing our inventory? So being an accountant, I have got a financial element in here, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the operational first and uh, some of the implications of what happens uh, what we're trying to avoid when it comes to poor inventory management practice. So our operational issues uh, are order management. So if you're selling uh, in a brick and mortar store, you have an e-commerce platform, maybe you have a, a, a B2B to, B to B style arrangement, so a wholesale kind of uh, sales channel, trying to consolidate, um, trying to keep all of your orders together understanding how quickly you need to turn those around, understanding whether or not you have the stock available. That's really, really important to understand, to fulfill those orders and to turn, turn these orders around quickly. Um, as we know, we tend to be a society these days that, that dictates and likes very, very things to be done very quickly. So we need to kind of have a, an up-to-date and easy way for customers to engage with us, but also an easy way to understand what are our outstanding orders and what do we need to do and how do we turn them around quickly? So the next one is understanding of stock availability. So this is huge when it comes to um, wholesale opportunities. It's also important for retail environments. Um, if we are selling something we don't have and our stock has a really long lead time, uh, we end up actually uh, causing more of an issue than we're doing. So we're, we're over-promising and under-delivering, which isn't exactly what we want to be doing when it comes to, to our you know, high-paced retail environment. So we need to understand what stock is available, where is it stored, how long is it going to take for me to ship that somewhere? And it really is a, is a, is a transparency issue. <clears throat> you know, you don't want to be going into a, into a wholesale agreement or an arrangement not knowing if you're able to fulfill their order that they're expecting to, to be able to dish out and 
two or three days. So <clears throat> we really need to understand exactly what stock we have and where it, where it is. So I've got supplier lead times or sourcing and materials for manufacturing. So I put them together just because we need to understand if we're importing a particular item. I don't know whether supply chain shortages we've had recently. Cool. Okay. Um, Hayden, are you so, okay? yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at the sort of. Uh, oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hayden, we're dropping out a little Sorry. bit. I just want to. That. Yeah, you're okay now. Brilliant. Okay. Excellent. Right. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so when we talk about the um, supply end here, is how we um, how are we sourcing? How long does it take? You know, if we're taking a really large order in, um, do we have um, do we have a large? You know, do we have the time to get the stock in to fulfil the order? You know, if we're manufacturing something and it's going to take you know, two months for something to arrive, but where we've sort of promised a one month turnaround, um, you know, we, we're going to have an issue here. So operationally, poor inventory management can um, really, really stifle of the orders. So we've got our supply chain issues I've mentioned before. There's kind of as it cut out, so I'm not sure if uh, you know businesses recently who, who perhaps have been used to a quite a quick and easy um, in, in coming of goods. So, you know, do we have do we have an awareness of, of the lead times it takes? Do we have a process to understand that? Do we know how much capacity we've got to manufacture? Or do we Or do we know we need to bring in? So, and we talked about the effective utilization of storage and warehousing capacity. So, you know, if we've, uh, we're not really thinking about receiving goods or where they're stored, if we're trying to fulfill orders, um, it can become a bit uh, cumbersome to do so if we're having to rummage through loads of different boxes or different sections of a warehouse. Equally so, you know, if we've got incoming orders, do we have the right amount of capacity and do we have the right amount of process to, to store them effectively or do, or do we not? Um, you know, do we need to find a short term storage solution? Do we not, you know, do we do we need to, to stop the order? Do we need to send it somewhere else? All of these things uh, are important for proper inventory management. And now the financial implications. So when we are inefficient with our inventory management, we can end up actually holding very, very large quantities of stock that's very, very expensive to the business. So if if you think about uh, the cash flow of a business and when we're looking at what we're spending our money on, if we're holding large quantities of stock, we're trying to, on that basis, as we're all trying to make money, we're trying to sell that, uh, assuming we're doing that, when we hold large stock, we're hard large quantities of inventory on cash in this inventory and in this business and what it means is we're unable to necessarily sell something quicker unless we reduce the price on it so you know as an accountant by background we're looking at kind of how how effective uh, quantities of stock because we shouldn't be doing that you know there might be some instances where uh, if you're a really, really large um, retailer, you could be holding a decent amount of stock um, in terms of quantity and value. But if that stock turns around very, very quickly, we're not to do is just be aware of, um, we just need to be aware of, of uh, that inventory management process and how we're holding it and storing it. So if we've got slow turnaround time on orders, uh, because 
because of our poor inventory management process, this can lead to cancellations, this can lead to refunds, um, which are financial, direct financial implications. But more importantly, especially, you know, I would say relatively recently, um, where we're having quite a few um, issues. Yes. Hey, Dan, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt your flow, but we keep going in and out. We've got slightly patchy internet. I wonder whether it's worth, as much as we love seeing your lovely face, whether it's worth you turning your video off and seeing whether that actually makes it better just for five minutes and then see if we can um, work like that and then try again in a minute. Would that be okay? Okay, and he's frozen again. I'm really sorry, everybody. We seem to be um, dropping in and out. I don't know if it's the uh, same for everybody, but on my screen, we're sort of dropping in and out. So perhaps when Hayden comes back, if he can turn his video off, it might help. <clears throat> I'd love to be able to carry on with the slides, but unfortunately, I know very little about this subject. Hayden, can you hear us? Are you there? Okay, I'm really sorry. He seems that Hayden's actually dropped out completely. So if we just give it a few minutes, I'm sure he'll actually um, pop back in. Now, hi, you're... You <laughs> I've come in as well. There's nothing worse is than when you get the technical glitches that we're all so used to um, with Zoom now. But what I suspect has happened is that Hayden has dropped off. He's probably going to do a really quick reboot and then he'll be yeah. back with us. ASS. And here he comes. Looks as if he's coming. I now know how those news presenters feel on BBC Radio, you know, BBC TV and what have you, when they have to kind of fluff a little bit. Yeah, I don't know frames there. I was like right we need to do a quick pub quiz while Hayden comes back yeah apologies about that I don't know I don't know what happened there that's going to be a <laughs> I'm going to storm out of here after the presentation and find out what's caused that so I do apologize everyone <laughs> that's okay you're ready to rock and roll again brilliant yes. I will turn my camera off and let's go again thanks Hayden no worries I'm going to keep my camera off just I think to uh, let's not risk it <laughs> okay that's fine thank you so um, slow turnaround time on orders and, and leading to cancellations and refunds. So, you know, we have a direct financial implication there uh, where, where our orders are being stopped or refunded. Um, and more recently, we have an issue that comes uh, in relation to sort of, I suppose, uh, public perception. You know, we've got reviews and we don't want to sort of have, you know, it was taking two months to complete and fulfill an order. You know, we're trying to do things as quickly and efficiently as possible. And sometimes that can mean actually um, uh, we're ending up in a bit of an, a bit of an issue um, as far as the business goes. So there's a financial impact and, uh, and I guess reputational impact with that one as well. So uh, this one's quite a dramatic sentence, but nevertheless, um, logistics nightmares can skyrocket costs and squeeze your margins. So if we're trying to um, bring in a uh, piece of fabric, for example, if we're trying to bring in something um, uh, from, from overseas, if it is much more expensive to bring this in, either by the shipping cost, the lead time, whatever this may be, um, you know, we might find we're actually paying more for the individual product itself because that business is also affected by a supply chain issue. Um, so that becomes increasingly more expensive to actually buy what we're importing but more importantly the actual costs of getting it delivered and fulfilling this maybe you know to receive the stock in but also actually to to externalize and to actually fulfill that order and complete that order so this means that our margins can get squeezed and what we thought was a relatively profitable item to sell actually ends up uh, completely completely squeezing that and becoming um, still important perhaps, but the profit we're expecting to make isn't going to cover our, cover our costs. So how technology can optimize your inventory management. So, you know, I've talked a lot about kind of the scares and the process and a lot of that um, today. And it's really important to talk about that because we need to understand where technology can fit in to make that a best process. So, Inventory management, loads of different areas. So we're looking at the order management, the tracking, the stock, 
uh, where do we get our sales from? How many sales channels do we have? And we need to make sure that we're operating that in the most effective way possible. So where technology can provide a lot of assistance is around um, automation, visibility, and looking at everything completely and totally. So we talked a little bit about um, uh, the sort of fulfillment side of the inventory management and the costings. So, you know, regardless of what inventory method you, you choose, um, we're going to need to find some way to track and manage that. So if we think about, um, you know, on the sort of incoming stock and, and placing the order, what we need to be able to identify and look at is uh, how much stock, how many raw materials or, or individual items I'm looking to sell do we have? Um, what are our current sort of run rates? What's our order coming in? Do we have, you know, orders that we're going to be able to fulfill? Do we need to purchase more? What is our lead time? How am I engaging with my suppliers? Am I ringing them up? Am I emailing them? Am I entering in a, a purchase directly into their system? Am I manufacturing? You know, do I have an understanding of how much raw materials I have? Um, and then we look at that that's the purchasing logistics initial sort of inbound side um then we look at the actual storage side so where is my stock um how much stock do i have at a certain location maybe this is for insurance insurance purposes um you know where where is it uh, how am i going to get it from one place to another um so that's the sort of the the, the storage side the warehousing side then we look at the sales channels. So where are my orders coming from? You know, does my website reflect accurately how many items I've got available? Um, so all of these different components um, form sort of integrated together to, to form a complete inventory management, inventory management system. Then as we look out, um, what's our outbound freight? How are we fulfilling these orders? You know, are we sending freight parcels to the United States? Um, what's the most cost effective way of doing that? Which which supplier is the easiest way? So all of these questions um, uh, can be answered by inventory systems or, or systems that in, uh, surround that. Um, but ultimately, you know, we will, it's much more efficient to do it this way than it is to do it manually. So if you think about the number of calls, inquiries, um, how you track your orders now, if you're not sort of using technology to help do that, and I don't include Excel as technology, um, by the way, because that's the computerized version of pen and paper. Um, so we need to kind of look at how we can how we can streamline that and make that better. So I've listed on here some apps that uh, we've used, engaged with, dealt with before, um, that uh, have sort of roughly organized from the cheapest to the more expensive. So the left-hand side being the cheapest, the right being the more expensive. Um, and these are different types of apps that manage and track inventory or complete the fulfillment side or track sales channels. So there's quite a few on there um, and they all do specific things. You don't need all of them. Um, so for example, MRP, Easy, Deer Systems, Unleashed and Sin7 all do relatively the same thing. Um, but alas, uh, you wouldn't ever want to say they were exactly the same and for all these suitable businesses. Likewise, we have uh, ShipStation and Star Ship It, which are fulfillment, so outward based fulfillment. Um, Zero, which is an accounting platform, which has a really simple inventory management solution in there. Um, I say that it is very simple, but it is designed for that purpose. And then we have Shopify, which is an e commerce platform, amongst many others. Um, so you're very familiar with e-commerce platforms now, um, probably Shopify, WooCommerce, Amazon, eBay, those sort of platforms, as uh, so they, they all encompass e-commerce uh, platforms. So when I look at the, uh, what, what a full supply uh, process looks like, uh, it looks something like this and it's a bit of a rudimentary slide and it's a bit of a basic slide but i think it conveys the message adequately so what we have is our supplier in the top left so within deer uh, as an example so this could be replaced with with unleashed it could be replaced with sin 7 what we're able to do is engage with our supplier by raising a purchase order based on a database um, that uh, has all of our all of our SKUs, all of our products, all of our purchase costs, 
uh, we're able to raise a purchase order, send that to a supplier. We're able to enter in a lead time for that. Um, so we know roughly what we've got on order, what we've got on hand, what our, what our turnaround, uh, what our lead time is for that stock. And then what we're able to do is understand roughly when it's going to arrive, you know, are we going to be able to meet our, our orders, um, our order capacity, and are we going to be able to fill those on time? So we're able to see that. So our supplier also, when we receive a purchase order and receive our, our goods, we're able to book them into the system. We're able to receive them. We're able to put them away in a location, a particular subsection of a location. Um, so it's very, very, I suppose, integrated. Um, one of the um, sort of a high level, I suppose, utopia situation. So SIN7, one of the, the softwares I mentioned on the previous screen, so the one on the bottom right, um, that has uh, something called EDI. And I believe DEER actually might have it as well. And EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange. And what that effectively means is that uh, I'm able to connect my inventory system with a supplier or with a customer, and they're able to place orders and uh, I'm able to place orders and update my inventory in real time. So it's a, it's a very, very integrated system. It's very expensive to set up, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it now. Um, but an ideal system where you're able to see what, what's available, um, they're able to see what's available, and you're able to interact with the customers directly rather than having to submit an order, process it, and then put it into the system. So it's definitely the utopia angle of, of the, uh, the system. Um, what we're looking at uh, is uh, on the left-hand side, we've got Shopify. So where we've got Shopify, uh, this is what our website's based on. We're able to place orders um, on there. We're able to, to look at, um, uh, you know, having different discounts on there. So it's a very, very complicated e-commerce platform. There's more than just discounts, but um, we're able to look at different products, different availabilities. Now we can not only send these orders to an inventory system, what we're actually able to do is to send the availability of those inventory system, those products to back up onto the e-commerce platform. So if you're, if you're selling something and it's running out of stock, um, you're able to have low stock alert, low stock uh, warnings. You're able to actually say we're out of stock and remove it from the website. You're able to say it's out of stock, but keep it on the website. There's much more of a much more, well, I suppose, varied options when it comes to um, handling and processing that that e-commerce side when you've got it integrated with an inventory management system. So this is great because if I'm doing wholesale orders and I'm processing wholesale orders and I'm raising invoices for for thousands or hundreds of different quantities. Um, it's going to let me know that if that's the same stock I'm selling on my website and therefore it's now out of stock, um, it's going to update on the e-commerce platform as well. When we look at ShipStation, we're talking about fulfillment. So when we look at this, uh, we're going to, all of the orders that are in our, in our inventory system are going to be sent across into a fulfillment platform. Now that fulfillment platform will be able to get quotes and estimates based on weight that is entered into the inventory system to work out how uh, best and what the most cost effective way to, um, to fulfill those orders are. So whether or not it's Royal Mail or Hermes or one of those delivery platforms. Um, so we're able to work that out. We're able to choose preferred fulfillment companies and we're able to provide shipping numbers, uh, sorry, tracking numbers, shipping notifications to our customers. Lastly, we've got the accounting element, which uh, is how all of the inventory, the sales orders, the stock purchases, all of that <clears throat> is sent across into, pardon me, sent across into zero or, or another accounting system. Um, which means that our accounting is always up to date and we don't have to re-key or re-enter anything in. So this is what a fully optimized sort of, I would say, top tier inventory management system looks like. Um, you've got loads of different components uh, integrated together. Now, when we look at this, if we were to say, well, what is the, what is the alternative to this? So let's just say we didn't have an inventory system we need to email or phone or however we engage with our supplier, log into their system maybe, 
we need to place an order with them. When we get it, we need to write it down or, or put in an Excel or put in some, you know, let's just say manual, manual process and effort here. Um, we then need to have an e-commerce platform if we've got one of those, um, assuming we do. We need to update the quantities on there manually. We need to list the products um, as is available again. Then when we have an order, we have to take that order, print it out probably is the most common way I've seen, um, fulfill the order. Uh, then we need to go and go into Royal Mail maybe, or we need to go into DPD or whoever it is, get a quote for the shipping, work out if that's what you want to do, print out a label, and then go and fulfill that. So you end up doing a lot more manual processes, uh, which is which is fine to a degree. Um, but it, what it doesn't do is just doesn't really give you that kind of slip, uh, slipstream style inventory processing. So, you know, the, the smaller number of orders you have, the easier it is to handle with the manual process. But often with these things, you know, you can you can have quite a few orders very, very quickly. And inventory and inventory management is one of those things that um, it takes a while to implement and a while to sort of get together and integrate your systems. So actually what you end up doing is, is kind of piecemealing something together, um, which doesn't really work, doesn't really work for the business um, and really does cause quite a few complications um, because it is so in integral to your business. You know, we talked about what happens when inventory management doesn't really go, go uh, well. And this ultimately is a reflection of that. So again, the kind of things that you look at, at integrating at some point or managing and dealing with, say Shopify, for example, we can integrate straight into an accounting platform. We can also put, uh, you know, a fulfillment platform on top of that e-commerce platform as well. Um, so we don't necessarily need to have an inventory management solution, but having that really does, does uh, increase that, that whole process and make that a little bit more streamlined, uh, particularly where we have multiple sales channels. And that's kind of the the avenue we're talking about. So what do I need to do to get started? And I think this is the, the big part. So inventory management is, is not the most, <laughs> definitely not the cheapest uh, in, yeah, software and systems to implement. Um, they definitely are, you know, much more complicated than a professional services firm uh, or, or a software firm or whatever that may be. So there are going to be um, uh, some software costs. Um, but what we really need to look at is inventory management in terms of keeping it online and keeping it streamlined is you need to actually have a process. You need to understand um, in a lot of detail, you know, where you're buying your stock, how you're doing that, you know, is it manual, is it on the phone and, you know, you emailing, for example, um, where are your manual processes? Where are your electronic processes? Where are your, you know, um, systems? Where do you have systems that integrate? Where do you not? You really need to detail that out and understand exactly what it is you're doing. Um, what you then need to be able to do is go, well, actually, can we replace some of these manual processes with systems? How do we best, you know, what are we missing? What are, what are we struggling? What are our customers saying we're missing? You know, what are our suppliers um, you know, issues with dealing with us? Do we have issues? You know, are we able to fulfill orders on time? What are those sort of pain points that you're facing? And really understand, well, where do we go from, from here to address those? Um, and integration is key in developing an online, an online system and integrated system is, is fundamental. Um, really, it's to say, do we have a, a good e-commerce platform? Do we have a good fulfillment strategy? You know, how are we turning these, these uh, orders around quickly enough? Do we understand what the lead times are for our suppliers? And, and really by doing that, you're going to come up with a foolproof way of managing your, your, um, uh, you, your business and your inventory management, you know, and, and online systems help. So, you know, we just looked at the previous slide, having all these systems in place really does help integrate and really automate the whole process. Now, as with all these things, you know, they're not, um, always going to do everything for you. You're still going to have to be involved, still going to have to make sure the systems are up to date. But what it does do is it means you're able to work remotely. You're able to not necessarily be sat down printing out orders and, and you know, for an environmental impact as well as a, an operational and I suppose even sanity impact as well. 
So really uh, getting the best quotes and really making your business as efficient as possible. Um, e-commerce platforms, you're probably all selling on an e-commerce platform now, particularly the last couple of years have, have forced that, um, I think more than anything else. Um, but really what we're trying to do is say, um, you know, how do we, how do we uh, have that e-commerce platform? How are we working with it? Are we getting the most out of it? Um, and or do we need something better? And how can we work that, uh, work that out? So really, really quickly, um, you've obviously got free access to some, some advice and some grants available, and there's loads of sort of resource and support. Um, we're obviously always available to help. We've implemented quite a few of these systems and structure these systems um, so we can sort of help point you in the right direction um, uh, if, if you need sort of help or guidance or sort of fully adapt the process. But again, you've got quite a bit of uh, resource available and handy to you. Um, I would say definitely um, map out the process and understand your process and then, then seek some help. Um, I think uh, bouncing ideas of people that have sort of effectively managed inventory processes um, and utilize these systems is a really, really good way of, of not making any fundamental mistakes, um, not making sort of any errors. Um, whilst errors are great learning opportunities, um, you know, the last thing you want to do is, is cause a, a bit of an issue in your business when it comes to fulfilling or managing stock. Um, because that that does uh, that can quite have a big impact on the business and how people um, interact with you, I guess. So that's effectively that's all I've got to talk about um, today. So I believe we're going to have a few um, questions uh, now, or I believe we've got some questions available. So I'll pass over to, to Cheryl now. Yeah, thank you, Hayden. Thank you. It was brilliant. Do you want to try and put your camera back on? See how we go. Okay, let's give this a let's, let's give, give it a go. Oh, let's give it a go. I, see see if it works. Let me uh there it is. My little bar wasn't appearing at the top. Hey, hey. Let's see. Hello. Let's see if we can make this work for the last 10 minutes. That would be really good. Yeah, we've got a few questions coming. I'm sure you can see um from the chat. Um let me just let me just find where I was, the first one. Bear with me. So, um, with consignment stock, James has asked, do you think it tends to be more suited to already well-established businesses to test stock demand and performance? Yes, definitely. I think, um, I think uh, it's great for a business who wants to diversify, wants to offer something different, but is, is unsure. Um, mm -hmm. We often see it, uh, you know, with, with uh, artwork or very expensive pieces where um, artwork is naturally very subjective, um, whether or not people like it or buy it. Um, so that tends to be why that's the case. Uh, but certainly if you're wanting to try something different or you've got a supplier, maybe that's sort of wanting to try a new product out with you, it can certainly be a way to, to test that waters before you're fully investing in, in something you're not sure is going to sell. Yeah, cool. Um, and uh, Lee's just sort of asked, um, how do businesses ensure, and I think it's quite relevant, how do businesses ensure these days they're compliant with distance selling laws um, in countries they're drop shipping from? Is there any advice, is there any best practice tips or anything that um, a company would need to be aware of? Yeah, I think uh, the tax compliance uh, especially is really complicated when it comes to, to this. And uh, for no reason I can work out, <laughs> um, <laughs> alas it is. So definitely when it comes to selling overseas and, and, and shipping items overseas, um, it's really important to understand uh, whether or not you're expected to register for their local VAT or, or equivalent. Uh, so I know America particularly is is a, a car crash when it comes to selling um if you're storing inventory there or sh shipping it over there it's really frustrating with their sales tax um so there are some strategies and advice um you know i suppose in the u.s local um uh, advisors tax advisors or, or um, fulfillment specialists can provide assistance with that um but certainly in the eu there's a fulfillment by amazon for example is very very common um, if you sell on amazon um, and fulfillment by Amazon do a lot in terms of, of advising you where you need to record and when you need to report for VAT um, in other countries. Um, so that's very, very handy. But definitely I see that, um, I definitely see that a lot of, of uh, uh, businesses are, are registering and, and dealing with the tax compliance. But there are also a lot of businesses that deal with that themselves. So, mm. you know, it's not necessarily as complicated as it, as it necessarily makes out to be. Okay. 
Well, thank you. Um, again, um, stock management, James is asking, drop shipping can really help with last mile delivery, minimising shipping costs, delivery time, etc. But he's asking, do you see more platforms, um, options that can assist with multiple facility storage, distribution and management becoming a bigger part of supply chain system in years, in coming years? Yeah, I think the the big key here is is um, the integration between different platforms and visibility. So trying to understand, you know, where stock can be moved between multiple different platforms, how we move it most effectively. Um, it is a really complicated area just because of stock ownership, insurance, the actual fulfillment of the process. So I think it's still a while away before it becomes so efficient that um, it's going to be an easy, simple kind of systemized process. Um, but certainly I think that a lot of the, um, I suppose, specific 3PL, uh, so third party logistics firms, um, uh, are really, really good at managing that, that process, similar to fulfillment by Amazon. They've got the systems there, um, at a, at a big scale, but certainly at a smaller, at a smaller scale that will come no doubt very, very quickly. Sure, sure. And just to finish up, and, and obviously because we're sort of, um, you know, talking about SMEs and that sort of thing, um, what's the usual tipping point that you see a business moving to an automated system? Is there sort of, and I think you covered that slightly in your presentation anyway, but is there a minimum number of orders or a certain point that a business really should look at, you know, yeah. being digital? Yeah, I think that, you know, my, my opinion is if I was to set up an inventory business tomorrow, I would want to have all of the, the kit available. Mm -hmm. um, probably I wouldn't set it up tomorrow, but I would certainly be looking at that as a priority. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason is, is it does, it can landslide, have a landslide impact and very, very quickly require mm -hmm. a lot of attention and focus. Um, in terms of minimum number of orders, if you're getting a steady stream of orders come mm -hmm. through, from multiple different platforms and you're not trying to sort of pick the business up and really push it really, really hard. And I say that <laughs> not as in you're not invested in making the business grow, but you're not trying to get those first few sales through the door. Yeah. Um, that's when I would say, look, you know, we want to make sure this is scalable and effective because um, we don't want to be printing out orders or, you know, printing out emails and, and trying to do that when we're the only one in the business and we're trying to make the sales, it just becomes a bit convoluted. So especially when it comes to an e-commerce platform, especially when it comes to um, a fulfillment platform, I think they're definitely the, the, the ones to look at. Um, and I think the inventory system, you know, where, where it's becoming, you've got multiple sales channels, you've got multiple locations, you're storing stock, you may be drop shipping all of these things are indicators that you probably should be looking at a, a, a highly integrated um, inventory management system. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Hayden. And Hayden's details are on the screen there. Um, so if you do have any additional questions or queries, I'm sure that Hayden wouldn't mind an email. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> Get absolutely, um, you know, bombarded, but I'm sure Hayden wouldn't mind an email or two um, if you want to carry on that conversation. And do please remember, you know, there is that support there from the digital champions as well. So this is something that perhaps one of the digital champions could help with in the early stages, just to sort of look at your business with you and see whether this is something that you need to be taking further. So all that really remains now for me to say is a, is a big thank you to Hayden um, and, um, you know, really appreciated that. And obviously, if anybody's got any questions or queries, please follow up with the Freedom Works team. Um, and we shall see you all again very, very shortly. There will be a recording of this webinar available. Um, and as I say, one last time, please don't hesitate to get in touch with either us or Hayden if you've got any queries. So thank you all very much and have a great afternoon. Bye now.